Okay. Okay. Can you roughly tell me what thirteen says? Thousand one hundred and ten meters. Yeah. That's all you got. It's like a trapezoid. Yeah. Is it in a water sixty-two point four? Oh, now we need different. We need meter measurements. What kind of? What's the fluid force? For the density. It doesn't provide what the density is. It doesn't provide what the density is. So, but it doesn't give you a density at all. Yeah. Hmm. We can't just guess the density of the water. Yeah. Let me see if I can look up the density. I think it's a solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, water. I never found web work. Let's see. Make it hard to do. Yeah, we're going to use the density of water to be a thousand. Meter cubed. Okay, okay, so force on this stem. So the stem is shaped like a trapezoid. That, so this one's the 3520, that one's the 3110, and that one's the height right there. So our plan in finding force is that we're going to set up an integral that has the density of the liquid. Then we need to know the area of the strip that we put in there to partition the region. And then we know, need to know the distance that that strip is from the top. Now, when we're in these metric units, our density is going to be the product of this, uh, what, this would be the mass density with the, so the density that we're going to use is the product. Nine thousand eight hundred. Now, in order to get the area of the strip, we're going to have to put this on a coordinate system. And so I've got several choices of where to put um, my y axis. I think maybe to make it easy on me, I'm going to put my y axis right through the middle. Like that, and the x axis here. And so I'm going to need this point and the coordinates of that point because we're going to have to write the equation of that line. So to get to this point, I need to cut this base in half, half of 
How much? I think it's one five zero four. One five zero. Oh, no, that's, no, that's not quite enough. How much? Why am I having trouble? Okay, one five one five. Sorry. One five oh five. One five one five. One five one five. Woo! Five five. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, forget this in public. Yes. I, I went out last night and it's still kind of foggy. <laughs> there are no calculations today. Here we go. Okay. Now here comes the tricky part. We got to cut this number in half to get out to here. So let's go, calculator. 1760. And then the height was 100. So yeah. that's going to take me up 100 units. And where's the water? Is the, the water to the height of the dam? I guess that makes sense. <laughs> so the liquid height is here. Okay, so we put a strip, a horizontal strip in there and compute its area. So it's some random Y coordinate. I put a horizontal strip. Its area is this whole length here times delta Y. But that whole length there is going to be twice the length from here to here. That's going to be a function, uh, X as a function of Y. And that function is going to be the equation of the line on the right hand side there. So let's write the equation of this line that passes through these two points by getting um, the slope. So the change in y is 100 minus 0 over the change in x, 1760 minus 1550. 100 here. It's 205. 205, 100 divided by 205. What? 40, 20 over 40. 55. Oh, my bad. Oh. 1555. All right, so yeah. 5 from 0 gives me 5. It gives me 0. 2. Still 205, right? Yeah. That's I did it last time. <laughs> Those are both multiples of five. Let me dangerously try to divide each of those by five. I get 20 over 41. Yes. Now the equation of that line, let me just use this as my x1, y1, because I don't have the y-intercept. So we have y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. And I'm going to take this equation and write x as a function of y. So I'm going to peel these numbers away here and get the x by itself. So I don't need that 0, but multiply both sides by 41 over 20. And then add the 1555, and we have 41 over 20 times y plus 15.55 is equal to x. And then I said L was x done twice. So if we double that, I get L is equal to 41 over 10 y. And then two times the 15.55 was the 31.10. So plus 
Okay, so now we go back up into here. We put our density to 9,800. The area of the strip is length times dy. That'll become the dy on the integral. And then the distance, what do you want to use for that? 100 minus y. That's the distance to the strip. Then the integral sign has to hold the depth of the thing being sliced up. So my force will have nine eight zero zero L forty one over ten Y plus three one one zero times the distance one hundred minus Y and the DY. What numbers do you want to put on the integral sign? Zero to 100, up the y-axis there, covering the depth of the dam. What will the units on this force be? We're in Newton's. metric system. These are going to be Newton. Newtons. OK? I think it wants a number, doesn't it? So you got to integrate. So talk to me how you're going to integrate this. Multiply it out. Take the 9,800 out. Foil that out. And then integrate term by term. On the test, could we do like that? On the test, I'll have you just set stuff up. Okay. I'll have you integrate some of the some of the arc length ones, and I'll have you integrate some of the polar areas. But for the most part, I'm just going to have you set things up. Yeah. There's no reason to see if you know how to integrate a polynomial. I want to see if you can integrate a sine squared, a cosine squared, an e to a power, that kind of thing. Anybody else have one? That's it. Okay, so our test is on Monday, and I have put a review sheet for you and a formula sheet for you on Blackboard. But the formula sheet is just to help you study. It's not going to be used on the test because that's what I told you to put in your head. Is there an answer key to the review sheet? Yeah, the answers are on the review sheet, and some of them might be right. <laughs> Did you say at least 50%? At least. Oh. Then that I could be off with that number too. <laughs> I think every single answer on that sheet is right, except for the ones that aren't. <laughs> okay, so most of the integrals will be to set them up, especially the ones right there at the beginning. Um, in 6.1, we were finding area between curves. So the key was to be able to sketch the graph of the region of integration and make the decision on whether you want to integrate dx or dy, and if you need one integral or more than one integral. So you've got to have some idea how to graph some things. Okay, so let's practice a few in there. Um, section 6.2 had two parts. We had the volumes by slicing. And so we describe what the base of the region looks like and what the slice perpendicular to the x axis looks like. And then you use the fact that volume is the integral of the expression that gives the area of the cross section uh, with respect to x. And the cross sections are usually circles or semicircles, um, squares, or equilateral triangles. So that changes whatever the formula for the area in the integrand is. Um, then the second part were the volumes by so volumes of solids of revolution. So here again, I will give you a region bounded by graphs. So it's important that you know how to graph that region. Then to ask you to revolve it about x axis, y axis, or a line parallel 
to the X or Y axis and set up the integral that gives the volume by disks or by shells or by washers, so disk washers, the same thing. Um, so you just got to make sure you've got your, your situation aligned correctly. So these will probably all just be set up. In section 6.3, I want to see if you'd be able to convert from polar to rectangular coordinates or vice versa, be able to find points of intersection, the polar curves, know how to make a basic graph, and find the area. Make sure you know the area formula. And so here's where I'll probably have you integrate. Because um, I want to see if you can integrate your sine squareds and your cosine squareds. Okay. So you'll probably have to integrate this one all the way out. Then in 6.4, I'll probably have you integrate something all the way out because the key was to be able to manipulate the expression to undermine the square root that's in our arc length formula. So arc length in rectangular coordinates. Is the integral from A to B of the square root of one plus um, y prime squared dx. So sometimes you had to manipulate this so that you had a UDU integral or a perfect square um, or a polar graph. The formula changed ever so slightly. It had the r squared term here, and then it's derivative squared here. So make sure you practice integrating these. Then in 6.5, um, we can do uh, the work done by a variable force. So we started with the uh, um, types where you're hauling up a chain. And so the force varies based upon how much chain is left there. The second type we did were the spring problems. And then we did the work in pumping a liquid. Then we did fluid force. And then we did the uh, centroids and the moments. So these will all be set up only. Is a centroid just the center of mass? Yes. We got some wacky weather going this weekend. Supposed to get three to five inches of snow on Sunday. So if something happens that school is delayed and or canceled, I hope that we can still take the test online. So when I know more about that, so I don't want to move the test is what I'm saying. So in-person classes are canceled, then we'll do the test online. Otherwise, we're going to do it right here. Okay. So be prepared. Look for an email from me, but we're not moving the test. It's Monday, whether you're here or not. Yes. Well, if you look at PDF on Blackboard, you can just send our work to you. Yeah, and you, I'll watch you through Zoom. And that way, if you have any questions on the test, you can ask it. But we're planning on doing it in class. But in case of an emergency, we'll just do it through Zoom. 
uh, where I post it on Blackboard and you open it up. Okay, so you don't get any formula sheets, no calculators, anything like that. You just get questions and put your answers. For 6.3, do you want us to be able to like tell you that this is like a landscape and right? So if I say the graph. Sketching the graph of four sine of three theta. What would it look like? Careful. Or diameter of three. No, it's not a diameter of anything. It's not a circle. It's a rose curve with how many petals? Three. Three. Odd numbers have odd petals. So you can graph it real quick. Graph me the rose curve. Three equally spaced petals. That means how many degrees apart are the tips? 120. 120. So find the first one and then just take the other two. Just head up there. Four sure. three theta. <laughs> All right, so I've got this outline on blackboard. We're going to rub it out. Again, you find the first petal by finding what angle goes in there so that the sign of that angle will give us one. What angle do I put in here so that the sign is going to be one? So what's the first angle that you think of the sign is one? Pi root two. So you need three theta to be equal to pi halves. Pi root two. So pi over six, we're in degrees. How many degrees is pi over six? 30. It's a 30 degree angle. So if you add 120 degrees to 30 degrees, the next one is at 150 degrees. And then add another 120 to that, the next one's at 270 degrees. So that tells you where the tips of each petal are. Now you're gonna have to figure out where they close because I might ask you something like find the area. So let's see if we can get this. So let's see, that's 180 degrees. So 30 degrees is one sixth of the way, about right here. And 150 degrees is 30 degrees short of 180. So the next one's right there, and then 270 is down here. So I know the sign of pi halves is one, so the tip of the pedal comes out here to four. Now, if I were to ask you to find the area we need to know where this particular petal closes. So in other words, I need adjacent angles around pi six for which the sign is zero. So give me two angles that make the sign zero. Zero, zero and pi. pi. So we need to set three theta equal to zero and three theta equal to pi.
So the petal closes at theta is zero and at theta is pi over three. So there's your rows. We can use this if we want to find the area. Let's get the area of one petal. Yeah, they're all equally sized. <laughs> So the area of one petal we would go from zero to pi over three and the formula has the one half out here and the f of theta squared in here. Okay, so when you square that, you get 16 sine squared of 3 theta. Where do I put that? Let's see, I got a little bit of room over here. Take the 16 out with a half and get 8. Then I'm going to take u to be 3 theta, so that du is 3 times d theta, or 1 third du is d theta. So I'm also going to get a 1 third out here. And then we have to integrate sine squared of u. All right, what's the formula for the integral of the sine squared of u? u over 2 minus sine of 2u over 4. Okay. 8 thirds u over 2 minus the sine of 2u over 4. Each u is 3 theta. And so we have. Eight thirds of three theta over two minus the sine of six theta over four from zero to pi thirds. But make a quick check six times pi thirds is two pi, sine of two pi is zero. Six times zero is zero, sine of zero is zero. So this is zero at both of those boundaries. So we just have to put a pi thirds in here. And so there's our area. Okay. So make sure you carry out the integration all the way on the ones that I say integrate. The rest of it will just say set up in big bold font. Maybe. Will you have any of those uneven ones? Like whenever there's, they're not symmetrical? Yeah, let's get some that intersect. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Get some that intersect. So, so, do uh, I have it in my head? I guess I have anything in my head today. Agreed.
Nerves are going to intersect. I can't really use a can't really use that when you'd never find the points of intersection. Please do what I want them to do. Let's see, let's look at the graph first. Let's see if I have to change anything. The kind of graph is four minus four cosine theta. Cardioid. Okay, so what is R when theta is zero? Zero. Good. What is R when theta is high halves? Four. Four. And it should be the same as three pi halves. And what is R with theta is pi? Eight. Eight. What's this? Okay, four cosine theta. Uh, yeah, that's on the other side, isn't it? Which do four sine? Four cosine. Oh, yeah. So that's over here. That might work for us. Yeah, let's just put it. It's over here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Over here? Yeah, but this symmetric. What about if there was like. You didn't want it symmetric. Yeah. Why not? Are you just like that kind of. Because yeah. the asymmetric yeah. ones are more complicated. Asymmetric ones. You only yeah. want asymmetrical? No, 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 that's what we're asking. No, oh, I don't know. I mean, I've read it yet. Whatever's going to best prepare us for the exam. I don't know. Nice. Make stuff up. <laughs> I don't know. Let's at least see if we can set this up. Four okay. cosine theta is over here. Like this. Right. And so inside the cardioid, but outside the circle. Maybe I like it the other way. Maybe I want it inside the circle, but outside the cardioid. How will we do it that way? Yeah, because it looks better. I want to go outside the cardioid but inside the circle. How's that? So do you know where I'm looking? Mm -hmm. That's this piece right here, correct? And so we need to find this point, this angle at which the intersection occurs and that one. So set the two equations equal to one another. It is symmetric, so if you find one of them, the other angle is just minus that. So you're going to set those two equal to one another. Hi, Richie.
Would you know where cosine of theta is a half? Pi over three. Pi over three. Okay, so who wants to take a shot at setting up the integral that'll give us the region that is in that circle but out the, outside of the cardioid? I'll spot you the one half. Unless you want to use symmetry. Do you use symmetry? Yeah. So then you integrate from where to where? Zero to pi over three. Zero to pi over three and double it. Okay, now I need something squared here. You could have four cosine squared. Four cosine theta squared, and then we take off the cardioid. Mm -hmm. Have any trouble completing it from there? So I'll just leave it then. Is there a case where you would have like instead of one function squared minus another function squared, you'd have them like this minus this and all of it squared? No cases like that, but there were some where we had to split the integral up into two integrals because they were two different places, right? Uh -huh. Remember that when I kept thinking of it on top of my head? But we couldn't put it all in one integral and share the bounds of integration because we had a circle that had different bounds of integration than, say, the cardioid. I can't remember which one that was. It was something like, here's a cardioid that you find the area of by going 0 to 2 pi. But then there was a circle inside here, and you can't find the area of that circle from 0 to 2 pi. Because that circle is, has area from zero to pi, right? So you take the equation of this cardioid from zero to two pi and subtract off the area inside the circle from zero to pi. Or you can just use geometry pi r squared and get the area of that circle. Okay, so just be careful. Not always can you do it with one integral. Yes, sir. You think it should? No, I think. Like you're explaining it that like the area of the circle is like so it's least okay. So I don't understand why you can't like you get the circle twice. Because when you're plotting angles that are down here, that, that part is not they're projecting them backwards. R is going to be negative. So this is traced out from zero to pi, but then once you start pl plotting these R, R values, they're going to be negative, so you're getting this back again. So, so well, one way to show you is to do it. This is that, this, whoops, this circle that I drew up here might be something like four sine of theta, right? What's that area by geometry? Right. Radius is 2 pi r squared. That has area 4 pi. Now, what happens if you integrate that from 0 to 2 pi? Four squared is 16. Divided by 2 is 8. Now we're integrating sine squared. So you get theta over 2 minus the sine of two theta over four. Sine of four pi and a sine of zero is zero. And so if I put two pi in here, I'm getting twice the area because that circle is being traced out twice between zero and two pi. Okay, remember when you get a negative r, it plots the point back in here. So be careful, take a look at the picture and see where it is. Okay. So circle is the only thing. Yeah, we did cardioids from zero to two pi, but the rose curves, we need to find out where they open and close. Because if you integrate zero to two pi, you're in danger of getting too much area again. Yes. Can we do it where we find the area of like three cos theta and four sine theta? Like what's like different? Oh, area? different, different radii.
Okay, so if you want the area between circles, R is equal to four sine theta and R is equal to three cosine theta. And it's a non-symmetrical region because the four sine theta is a circle of diameter four. And cosine is a circle of diameter three. And the region between is this shape here. There is an intersection here. It's not going to be one of our favorite angles because I just made this up. Can you find that angle in terms of an inverse trig function? So if the two equations are equal to one another, we've got sines and cosines, so we can write that angle as an inverse tangent. Sine over cosine is tangent, so let's divide by cosine. So I have four tangent is equal to three. That says the tangent of theta is three fourths. So theta is the inverse tangent of three fourths. What's this angle right here? I don't know what to call it. In, in rectangular call it coordinates, we call them vertically or horizontally simple. We're partitioning this with rays. So this isn't a simple region because down here, my rays from the origin hit this circle. Once I pass that intersection, my rays from the origin hit the other circle. So you need two different integrals. Agree? So let's get the lower one. Let's integrate from zero to that arc tangent of three fourths. Which one do I put here? Sine. Four sine. sine. I put four sine theta there. And then the other one goes from the arc tangent of three fourths to where? To pi over two, and that's the three cosine theta. Is that what you wanted to see? Is that okay? How did you know it was pi over two just by looking at it? Well, just by looking at it. <laughs> Look at the cosine curve. Coses, right? Cosine of zero is three oh, or okay. one here. Cosine of pi over two puts me back to zero. So it poses because cosine of pi over two is zero. Okay. Okay. What else do you want to do? Okay, how to get rid of that old radical? You okay, guys see the one I put on, keep the one that I put on blackboard. Okay. 
to make one up. Never mind, we go back to work. Let's just find one. Okay. Let's see if we can find the arc length of one eighth f of x is equal to one eighth negative x squared plus eight natural log of x. Say from Let's just go one to two. Let's at least get to where we can get rid of the radical signs. We gotta kind of hustle it up here. So let's quickly take the derivative. Oops, eight. Good with that derivative. Um, let's go ahead and set the one eight through there. And if you want, we can write this as a single fraction because eventually we're going to square it. It might be easier if it's already a single fraction. So let's get a common denominator of 4x. So I multiply this by 4 over 4, that by um, x over x. And so I'm going to have minus x squared plus 4 all over 4x as our derivative. Then our arc length formula has a square root sign here and a 1 plus our derivative squared. So we're going to integrate from one to two. One plus that thing squared. Let me write it as four minus x squared over four x. So far, so good. That's just feeding things into the formula. Now comes the algebra. We got to square that uh, fraction. So we square the top and you square the bottom. When I square the top of that fraction, I'm going to get 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth. All over the square of the bottom is 16x squared. I lose anybody doing that? Now I'm going to add here by changing this one to a 16x squared over 16x squared. So let's just do it right here. And now they have the common denominator. And I'm going to put them in descending order. I'll have an x to the fourth. 16x squared minus 8x squared gives me a plus 8x squared and then plus 16. Can anybody factor the numerator? Any factors of x to the fourth? So those are the x squared and x squared. Factors of 16 with the same sign that add to eight. Four. Four and four, right? So x squared plus four, all squared. And now I've got 
a perfect square on top, a perfect square on the bottom. We just take the square root of the top and the bottom. And then we should have something that we can integrate because the square root sign will be gone. What we'll have to integrate is x squared plus 4 divided by 4x. 3. Now what? We can't integrate the way it sits there. Split it up. Split it up. Right? That is x squared over 4x plus 4 over 4x. So you're going to have 1 fourth x to integrate and 1 over x to integrate. We good with both of those? One fourth x squared over two plus the natural log of x. One two. Outstanding problem. Is there anybody? Natural log of one is zero. Natural log of two is the natural log of two. So that gets to be plugging the numbers of that line. Yeah, you can stop there. Yeah. So, so Monday is our double class day. Is that right? So my plan is the test for the first. Yeah, I think we'll use the whole time. I hope they make it long enough to keep you busy. Yeah, it's gonna be a center of mass on the test. Set them up. Set up the intervals that give the mass moment with respect to x, moment with respect to y. And tell me how to find the x bar, y bar. You guys, good. Okay, if you find something that you're fluxum by <laughs> mixed up about, just send me an email. I'll be hanging around a little bit this happened this weekend. Thank you.